Hey everyone, I'm That Girl Lena, and as you can tell by the title, I'm no longer in Peace Corps, I'm no longer in Indonesia, and this video is basically just a story time of how bad my last two weeks in Indonesia were. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being, so grab a snack, relax, and enjoy my suffering. February 1st, 2019 is when it all started, and I remember that day exactly, to be honest. It was a Friday, immigration decided to give me a surprise visit at my school, which low-key scared me at first, but then they just needed to take photos of documents that I had already given them. Whatever. Uh, I finished teaching for the day, and I was about to go home. I suddenly started feeling dizzy and nauseous and cold and Indonesia is a tropical country, so it's never cold. I checked my temperature when I got home, and it was 101 something. Now in the Peace Corps, almost all communications goes through WhatsApp, so I immediately texted the doctors my symptoms, and they basically said, okay, drink ORS and keep us posted. And if you've ever been a volunteer, or if you plan on being a volunteer, you get very sick of hearing drink ORS water. It's basically just sugary salt water that is supposed to keep you hydrated, but the doctors make it sound like, oh, I have a cold. Drink ORS. I've been vomiting all morning. Drink ORS. I broke my leg. Drink ORS. So yeah, whatever. I drank ORS and plenty of fluids, but it just got worse as the weekend progressed. My temperature hit 103.8, I had cold sweats, I had horrible joint pain, and I mean just horrible aching going down my spine. Like I was crying over how much pain I was in and moving only made it worse. So the PC doctors ordered a blood test for me and right when that clinic opened on Monday, I took the blood test and it turned out that I had dengue fever. And of course, I did the worst possible thing that I could have done to myself. I looked it up on the internet. So dengue fever is a blood disease uh, that is passed around by mosquitoes, kind of like malaria. Symptoms may include, I'm gonna read this part, sudden high fever, severe headaches, pain behind the eyes, severe joint and muscle pain, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, skin rash, and mild bleeding such as nosebleeds, bleeding gums, and easy bruising. There is no vaccine and there is no exact treatment except lots of fluids and prayer. Part of Peace Corps policy is that when a volunteer gets infected with dengue, they are put in a hotel so that they can be more comfortable while they're recovering. However, I should mention that everyone in my community was telling me that I should be in a hospital or asking me why I wasn't in a hospital already. But the doctor said, As a policy, we don't put volunteers in the hospital when it's their first time infection. And we, we have had, had six cases, cases of dengue, dengue so far this year, and no one needed to be admitted into the hospital. And I was just not complaining. Like, I get a free stay in a hotel with air conditioning and hot water. It's been five months, absolutely sign me up. So Monday night I was in a hotel and my host sister, God bless her, stayed with me for that first night and everything was fine at that point. Believe me, I was still sick. But now I could relax in an air conditioned room and have hot water showers. But the next night I got a nosebleed and a very bad stomach ache. So again, I immediately sent a text to the PC doctors, and I'll tell you exactly what they said to me. So I said, Hello, I just got a nosebleed and I'm having some bad stomach pain. That means I'm in the hemorrhagic stage, right? And they replied, That doesn't sound good at all. I answered their questions, and then they told me, Okay, we are going to arrange transport to Surabaya tomorrow morning for you. What? So I asked. I'm sorry, but what made it serious, the nosebleed or the cramps? I'm kind of scared now. And they replied, Both symptoms are red flags. You sound stable at the moment. But we need to get you closer to us because we may have to hospitalize you. Basically, it didn't feel serious until this point. The next morning, they arranged an emergency taxi to drive me four hours from Lidar to Surabaya. And let me tell you, that was a long four hours. I was thinking like, okay, I'll give all my savings to my little brother. I'll give all my clothes to my best friend. I'll give my cat to my mom. I don't have a lot of stuff. 
I should write letters to say goodbye to everyone. Literally writing my will. So we finally arrive in Surabaya and I immediately go to the Peace Corps headquarters where they have a medical center. One of the doctors checks me out and she notices that my skin is very red and blotchy and she tells me, Oh, that's dengue skin. That means you're near the end of the infection. So I don't think we need to put you in the hospital, but we will put you in another hotel so that you are close to us. Oh, okay. So that means I have another day or two being sick and I'm back in a hotel, so mini vacay. It's not that serious after all. But the next morning I got another nosebleed and the doctor said, okay, we're putting you in the hospital today. I had never been admitted into the hospital before. And now I was in a hospital in a foreign country by myself for four days. None of the nurses could speak English and my Indonesian was not at the level of discussing my medical results. Sometimes the Peace Corps staff would come visit me, but for the most part, I was alone. So my first day in the hospital, they gave me an IV, and by the way, those things freaking hurt. It's nothing like the movies. And I, I don't know if it was this guy's first day, but when he was putting the IV needle in, he didn't hook it up to an IV bag yet, and he wasn't able to stop the bleeding with pressure. So I bled out of the tube all over my hand and onto the floor. You can imagine what I was thinking when I looked down and saw a puddle of my own blood. I'm gonna fucking die here. They showed me to my room and they took a blood sample for tests and my platelet level was 130 but normally you're supposed to be in the high 200s. Now there are three levels of dengue fever. Normal dengue fever, which most people get on their first infection. Then there's dengue hemorrhagic fever or DHF, where platelet levels go under 100 and there are more hemorrhagic symptoms. And last is dengue shock syndrome, where platelet levels go even lower and can result in death. Specifically, dengue fever attacks your blood platelets and your platelets are what helps your body to heal itself. So basically, this disease was killing off the things that were trying to heal me. The second day, I had another nosebleed. I was bleeding from my gums, and there was also evidence of internal bleeding. And my platelet level was at 90 now. I dropped 40 in a 24-hour period. And my mom, who was a lab technician in the military, said that if I dropped another 30, I would have started organ failure, and I would have needed a blood transfusion just to keep my body going. This kind of proved to me that I had DHF. And again, this was my first infection. It wasn't supposed to get this bad. According to the PC doctors, I shouldn't have even needed to be hospitalized, but I was. So I kind of realized that there was a serious chance that I could die. Hey God! It's me, uh, yeah, girl. So, uh, I know I always say I want to die every time I have to get out of bed, but, um, I didn't really want to go out like this, you know? So, could we, uh, just dial it back a little bit? The third day in the hospital, my platelet levels finally started climbing again. They took out the IV and they kept me for a third night to keep an eye on me. Sunday, February 10th, I was discharged from the hospital and put back in the hotel in Surabaya to be close to the Peace Corps office. And one of the Peace Corps doctors told me, And don't worry, if or when you get dengue fever again, we'll immediately put you in the hospital. Oh, okay. Uh, why is that? Peace Corps policy, we don't put first-time infections in the hospital because usually they're not as serious as yours was. However, we always, without exception, put second-time infections in the hospital because second-time infections are usually much worse than the first time. Worse? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, my dude, you probably should have kept that to yourself. Because you see, in Indonesia in January 2019, 132 people died from dengue. Only Indonesia, only January, 132 people dead. I got sick February 1st, and another 43 people died before I was discharged from the hospital. 
Those are facts. You can look those up. And even if I didn't die from it, I still could have gotten permanent damage. A woman who contracted dengue in Malaysia can't even write her own name now because she has so much nerve damage from the infection. And to be honest, they had told me about this policy from when we first confirmed that I had dengue. So obviously, when I looked back at how serious the first infection actually was, oh, I was honest with them. Hey, I... I really don't want to risk getting dengue fever a second time. Could I possibly get medical separation since I had such a bad reaction to my first infection? Especially since it was DHF? Uh, we actually don't think you had DHF. What? Yeah, and uh, your hemorrhagic symptoms were probably just coincidence. What? The nosebleeds were probably just caused by your high fever. What? Basically, as soon as I said I wanted to go home, or I was thinking about going home, they tried to minimize the severity of the infection. Which, to a point, I kind of understand they were trying to convince me to stay by telling me it wasn't that bad. Therefore, I'm sure they didn't intend to, but they basically talked to me like I was some dumb kid who was overreacting. They tried to tell me that all of the bleeding symptoms were not directly caused by the dengue virus. I tried doing my own research and one of them said, I hope you're not getting all of your information from the internet. At the time, I wasn't able to express this effectively to the Peace Corps staff, but I can now. I did not leave because of how bad the first infection was. I left because I was not willing to risk a second infection. I did not want to find out what worse meant. I still don't want to find out what worse means. One thing I want to make clear is that I truly believe that if the doctors had not put me in the hospital when they did, I may not have made a full recovery. And I'm very thankful to have had them during that tough time. However, I do think they should have used a different strategy of convincing me to stay. Because... It was insensitive and it failed. Another thing I want to make clear is that I still believe in what Peace Corps is about. I still believe in their message, their mission, and all of the volunteers around the world. I quit the Peace Corps purely because of health reasons. I loved my host family. I loved the people who I was working with and the students I was teaching. If I had not gotten sick, I would still be in Indonesia working as a PCV. It just wasn't meant to be, I guess. I had actually already filmed this video the day I was leaving Indonesia, but that video was very sad and serious and I was still feeling very guilty. But when I got home, I decided to take a break from making videos and see how I would feel about it later. And basically, I don't feel guilty about it anymore. <laughs> Took me eight months, but here we are. Hilariously, when I was first being interviewed for Peace Corps, they asked me what, if anything, could stop me from fulfilling the whole two years. And my answer was death or the threat of death. Since they rejected my request for medical separation, I formally quit. I traveled 46 hours home and got to hug my parents right when I landed. It took me another two months to fully recover from the disease, but I'm good now. In fact, I'm better than good because I already started a new teaching job in South Korea. I'm teaching at a private school in Seoul, and the best part is I'm getting paid now. Alright, that's it for this video. Hit the like button and lets me know if this video sucked or not. Also leave a comment, I love talking with you. If you have any questions about Peace Corps, please ask. Now that I'm in South Korea, I'm going to be traveling and exploring a lot. So if that interests you, then subscribe to see whenever I post a new video. I promise not to drop off the face of the earth for 8 months again. Also, sorry about the lighting changes throughout the video. I don't know how to unautomate this camera. Just to, you know, make it clear that I am not a professional. Alright everyone, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!